there, I'm Marin Olaszczuk, and I'll be speaking to you about my article entitled, In Today's Market, Your Food Chooses You, News Media Constructions of Responsibility for Health Through Home Cooking. In this article, I explore the presentation of family meals in news media, particularly in relation to health. So what I did for this article was I chose six English-speaking newspapers across the United States and Canada that all had nationally distributed circulations and readership spanning a wide range of political affiliations and economic statuses. And now I searched both the print and the online content of these news articles um, and news outlets over a period of two years, and I was looking at articles specifically mentioning either family meals or home cooking and health. Now what I first did was I read through these articles openly for common themes and tried to get a sense of the central messages that media was presenting about family meals and home cooking. I noticed at this point that media regularly presented family meals as deteriorating, that parents today are not cooking enough meals at home and are replacing meals consumed um, com communally or on a dinner table and are often made with whole, unprocessed ingredients. They're replacing meals like this with highly processed and pre-prepared meals eaten alone or on the go. And I found that media frame this deterioration negatively, arguing that it contributes to a variety of negative health outcomes. And so this ultimately is the social problem that's at the center of this paper. Specifically, when I was reading through these articles, I noticed something about how media framed who or what was responsible for these deteriorating family meals that seemed a bit different than how existing research had depicted it. Now, the existing sociological understanding of family meals was that they are an arena where responsibility for health outcomes are downloaded onto individuals under neoliberalism. Within neoliberalism, the responsibility for health shifts away from the state or industry and onto individuals, often through their participation within the market, say, for example, through their consumption of health products or services. Within neoliberalism, individual health-promoting practices such as home cooking are also imbued with moral value because they signify characteristics that are highly regarded today, such as control, attention, and care. Under a neoliberal framework, family meals are valued not only then for their role in promoting health, but have also come to signify quote-unquote good character and proper social citizenship. At the level of the social problem, media offers reasons for why parents are not cooking enough regular healthy meals for their families. At the level of solutions, kind of obviously, media offers solutions for how to get families to cook more and eat more regularly together at home. So I separated these aspects of media out into these two forms, and I counted each time that it attributed responsibility for deteriorating family meals to either individual choices or structural conditions at both the level of the problem and solutions. And I tested how these frames also were differentially applied across demographic groups to test who was presumed to be doing the work of producing family meals as subjects, as well as who was called on to speak to it as an expert. I found that structural frames made up 63% of the codes that I applied relating to the problem. What this means is that I found that media largely constructed preparing family meals as conflictual, generating guilt and anxiety among parents who seem doomed to fail amidst a, process, uh, a food environment saturated with inexpensive, highly processed food, and were struggling with the competing demands of paid work and intensive parenting ex expectations. However, turning to the solution is where individualism prevailed, with individual narratives representing 72% of the sample. In other words, despite recognizing a complex problem, the most, pro the most common solution that media presented lied within the individual faculties of parents, that individuals must simply work harder to put nourishing meals on their families' tables more regularly. Additionally, and importantly, I find that these articles are highly gendered, with women making up the vast majority of both subjects and experts meaning it is chiefly mothers who are expected to work harder to cook these meals at home. Investigation into the class nature of this data also revealed important complexity to it. In particular, I found when low-income subjects were specifically featured, structural frames were pro predominant in both the social problem and the solutions. In other words, the most common narrative I found of low-income family food work is that it is constrained by structural inequalities that are embedded in poverty and food insecurity. So in sum, this article indicates that news media must acknowledge pressures existing beyond individuals that make producing family meals difficult. 
However, parents, and especially mothers, and particularly mothers who are financially stable, remain responsible for understanding and combating these pressures to solve the problem by simply cooking more healthy meals at home. These findings demonstrate how responsibility is assigned to deteriorating family meals within the contemporary neoliberal context, but I also argue that they can apply to scholarly understandings of neoliberalism more generally. They indicate the importance of attention to how neoliberal framing can be applied partially, to the identification of solutions to a social problem, but not necessarily to its causes. Neoliberalism is often critiqued as a concept for its amorphous and determinative nature, but this research shows both its persistent, if subtle, influence within institutions and the value that can come from a careful dissection of its operation. Mm -hmm.